All right, episode four, we are back in Gainesville. We're gonna show you some stuff that's been going on in the shop. <laughs> we should record this. Wait, there's like five more there. I know, I'm still, we'll bring them all out. Let me, let me get these camera drops again. I didn't realize this was gonna be filmed. This is, this is my life. It's almost falling off. This is my life, people. <laughs> um, who are you and how long have you been here? My name's Alexander Guzman. Been working at the Millie Pop shop for about six months. Was a customer for like the first two years of their existence beforehand. Do you buy and sell cards and how are you doing with it? I do buy and sell cards, <laughs> mostly buy. It's kind of, I've only sold a couple cards, but starting to learn and learn about grading and all that, factoring that in, I should, I'm doing pretty good with it. As a collector, it's fun to buy and sell, so doing pretty good. And what do you collect? I collect my favorite sports teams, so I like the Denver Broncos, the Indiana Pacers, Orlando Magic, uh, mostly Gators, ex-Gators, and then some of my favorite players. I'm a Broncos fan, but I love Mahomes. I think he's an incredible talent, so Mahomes is a big uh, big piece for me to collect. And how is it like working here at Millie Pop Shop? Working at the Millie Pop Shop is, is a really good gig, I, and really enjoy it. Uh, always hassle them about hiring me as a customer and really in enjoy working here as a sports fan and sports collector. It's just awesome to just be around sports all day and I'm a sports management major so it doesn't get much better to work at a sports car shop. Oh here we go we got a redemption. I haven't seen it yet let's see who it is. Basketball absolute. I'm calling Anthony Edwards. Tools, calling tools of the trade four swatch signatures level sure, one. Could be kid Anthony could be big. Number two, LaMelo Ball. Let's go, LaMelo Ball. Wow. Big hit. So this uh, collection just came in yesterday. This is just some of the best stuff. Guy walks in, he says to me, Jamil, I got a bunch of stuff in my garage. I've had these for years. And he pulls out 1961 Fleer basketball, which if you don't know, 61 Fleer basketball is such an iconic set. Will rookies, Russell rookies, Oscar rookies. There's so much in there. We do a deal for it. But it's crazy to me that like even in Florida, right, people in the humidity, just don't even know about cards and so we're pulling these cards out of uh, binders that are sticky from the humidity and uh, the moisture and all that the cards actually came out okay the two wilts are the the big cards in the lot you also have three oscars the two uh there's a bill and a, a wilt action but there was a ton of other cards it's really cool to see the fact that we have people come in with this stuff and that's one of the uh, bonuses about having a shop you have just some legitimacy people come in they know you'll be fair with them and uh, we built our reputation on that just trying to be fair with these collections so 61 Fleer example plus a, a bunch more but these are all in these holders because they're going to California to PSA hopefully get some good grades. So something crazy about the set is just the cut of the cards right so 1961 Fleer they were cut so poorly back anything vintage from the 50s or 60s baseball basketball football but if you see this wilt right it's way off center and finding cards that are in low grade let's say this card was creased but it was centered actually sell for much higher rates than a card that's graded higher that's not centered so Finding 61 Fleer that has uh, a good centering. Here's another example of a Russell. See how badly they're centered? And they were just cut so poorly. So when you buy these, if you can find 61 and a good centering, don't matter the grade, that's actually a premium on this stuff. Basketball certified sophomore sensation on oh, gold. Sophomore! Let's go, Zion! Four. Let's go, Zion! Oh! 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 Let's go! Let's go! go! Zion, sophomore sensations auto. Holy cow. So my man Eddie just walked in. He brought in this uh, banger 1986 Jordan. Look at this thing. So this is 86 Jordan rookie. And it's graded by a company called Pro and it's got a 9.5. So to the naked eye, man, that'd be like, wow, that's an awesome grade. You want to tell them a little bit about the story behind this? I actually uh, dug this out of a trunk in one of my closets. Um, I bought it some 20 odd years ago, just in a shop one day and I saw it was a Jordan. Didn't know he was going to be the GOAT, but I bought it because of, I got a son who's, Show him. whose name is Jordan. Hey! Whoa. You know, so, so, <laughs> so what year was that so, probably, Eddie? Uh, he, my son was born in 91. Okay. So, I mean, I bought this, he was just a few years old probably when I, when sure. I, when I bought it. Sure. I dug it out and I'm just kind of, you know, I'm checking here with Jamil. Yeah, looking at the card together. So, Eddie and I looked at this card. And one thing people should know is that Pro Grading was, a, was an off kind of kilter grading company in the 90s that not necessarily the most favorable, but um, they still put cards in slabs and they look really nice. This card is centered really well. So Eddie and I wanted to look at it together. And so what I did is one thing I always have with vintage cards, especially even graded slabs, is I measure them, right? So I'm gonna show you guys an example on these cards. So this card should be 2.5 by 3.5, all right? And we have these digital calipers that we use. And I looked at the card and I told Eddie, I said, you know what, man? 
something looks a little off about one corner. So when I measured this one side, right, I was at a little, it's just eyeing it. Let me get it ready for him, so. Give my man justice here. So 3.49 right there. So that's okay, that's 0 0.01 off of what we expect. But when I came to this other corner over here, three point, right at 4.748. And so you would expect those to be no, you know equal. And the problem with it is, is if a card is off by even just a little bit, right? If these cards are off by even just a bit, PSA or Beckett or one of the main grade line companies will grade it as what's called authentic or altered. That doesn't mean the card's a bad card. It's still an authentic Jordan rookie. The problem is the resale of it. So um, today, my man Eddie, I think the card looks super cool. I think it's uh, really neat. I personally wouldn't buy it, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't, if I, if I own this, wouldn't sell this and let people know. So Eddie told me, he said, if anybody's watching wants this, get a cool Jordan rookie, hit us up in the shop, right? Absolutely. And I'll put you in touch with Eddie. It's a 9.5 Pro graded Jordan rookie so something to think about if you want um <clears throat> I, I it's not in a psa or beckett slab but it's still a jordan rookie that i believe is out there hit us up thank y'all oh you're on two of five kp case hit case hit new era i see you kyle padgett remember that always got you buddy two of five jordan alvarez Let's go! All right, my friend, Mr. Scott, so how long have you been into this shop or going to the shop so far? I've been coming here since it opened, basically. Met Jamil and Meredith actually randomly uh, at a restaurant one time. We started talking cards and they were opening their shop pretty soon after that. I think it was a month or two after that. And you know, I got two kids, they're eight and six now, and they're into sports cards and Pokemon and stuff. So it, it's just so awesome to have a place here in town that I can bring the kids. And they almost treat us like family when we come in here. We come a couple times a week. And, and so since this place opened, we've been coming in here. And how long has it been open so far? About two, three years, I guess? Yeah, almost? yeah, it's almost okay. three years, I think, give or take. I've sort of lost track of time. Since this place opened, we've been coming. Why is the, you could say that, why is the card market or like the card hobby so intriguing? And then nowadays, you know how, it's booming basically. The sports card, Pokemon cards, I guess you could say Yu-Gi-Oh, whatever cards. Why is why is it so intriguing nowadays? Or even you could bring up the past when you're younger or like even older. Sure. Nowadays, why is it so like incense? Why is it so cool? Well, you know, I think uh, the market now is a lot of different things are driving it. I wish I knew the actual answer to that and what was driving it, but I think COVID has sort of helped with people having a little bit more time on their hands to get into it. eBay, um, you know, I, I was back into it back when I was in middle school and high school and stuff and then got away from it a little bit and honestly mealy pops helped me get back into it it was maybe right before the huge boom i think luca and zion williamson have been a huge huge driver in terms of at least the basketball market and then it sort of trickled down from there and everything soccer football baseball Yu-Gi-Oh, pokemon hockey i mean everything just seems to be so huge right now and i think a lot of it is just the catalyst of honestly a few players and then having ebay and such an easy way to sell and facebook and so many different social media ways of selling the cards and being able to trade the cards and so many different groups of people to interact with i think it's just really it's created a huge huge community that's not just it's not small anymore it's almost a worldwide community and so when you have something like that it's inevitable that it's just going to blow up and, and hopefully we can uh, keep riding this wave it's, it's been fun like i was always i like to ask this question what's the greatest find you ever had or pull even to say or like one of the memorabilia you have that's like, oh man, this is top tier. Or like, and I'm gonna treasure this for. It's a good question. So my son is a huge, huge Tom Brady fan. We actually pulled a gold Tom Brady auto out of ten out of out of a pack one time, and so that was huge. And we also pulled a Joe Burrow auto together with my kids. Uh, so that's probably the two biggest. Anything we that I pull with my boys is is a lot of fun, and especially when it's somebody that we like. My one son loves Joe Burrow. The other one loves Brady, and we pulled autos out of both of those guys. Uh, out of packs and, and just to see their excitement and and they were actually the borough was here in shop and it was it was pretty awesome uh, every, you know everyone's cheering for for us in the shop and everything so it was really cool so these cars just came in the shop just trading busy saturday just a lot of things happening guy walks in with a binder says i want to trade and then so the cool thing about it is like he doesn't want to trade everything when well, he's a collector which i totally get he wants to trade in to get a, a new elite trainer box so i got these four cards and i'll just talk to them really quick so i'm looking through his binder and you might say like well how do you know what to pick out so in pokemon right now Trainer cards like this. He was one of the original, I think, trainers, Brock. So these are really hot. People love this stuff. Uh, they're really cool too, the full arts. I think they're really shiny, people like that. And then these cards, the legendary birds are original as well. And this is the shiny Articuno. It's like a $30 card. And this one is a uh, rainbow rare of all three of them. But the cool thing about it is like people can come in at any time and just trade in cards that they pull. 
get more wax and things to open up and it's just kind of a cycle everybody has fun with it so that's that's a, a quick pokemon one-on-one i guess so you you said to me earlier you want to talk about the other thing which is this guy yeah so let's talk about my, what you got in here my card binder my favorite card in my binder is probably my cinderace v max Ooh. i pulled Four. this i pulled this maybe um a month or two ago yeah my friends have tried to trade for that and what'd you tell them no get your hands off my card this is my pull <laughs> so what would you want to ask me like values or like what some good ones yeah, how much would this be we can look that one up so I... i'll use ebay on that one these hi hypers the rainbow rares are some of the more expensive cards right yeah it's it's in decent condition but sure. i traded it and it's not in it's so not in the you. best condition so here's but... a quick way buddy cinderace Right? You go on eBay, it's Cinderace, and it's VMAX, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to type in what's most important, the card number, because it's multiple. So 036. So then we go here, and we look at sold. So these are the last raw sales. So $875, $9, $3, but they all vary based on condition. So I would say the card is probably between 7 and 10 bucks. Okay. Right? Awesome. All right, so let's talk about this consignment. Yeah, yeah so I, I've had this consignment case. Um, at the shop now probably since October and I use it to sell the cards that I don't want to mess with eBay on and they're ones that aren't going to go into my PCs. I also kind of having in life in the card shop talk to a lot of people who build a lot of friendships so I bring in cards that I know other people collect as well um, so that they don't have to that when they buy those cards off eBay they don't have to pay shipping and it's kind of cheaper for them it kind of fosters in the community but I literally just uh, like I said pick cards that um, I, I don't PC I really don't sell on eBay anymore because it's just too much work too much headache people send stuff back and they you know just take the fun out of it for me personally mm. um, I like this because it allows me to be a passive seller and um, I don't have to uh, you know, spend all my evenings listing stuff online. I'll spend one evening pricing all my cards, bring it in, come in about once every two or three weeks, fill it up, and then I just manage it that way. And, you know, I pay attention to what sells, what doesn't sell. I mean, it's just a nice way to, um, I, I use the, I'm sure it's everyone uses it, I use it a term to fund the hobby. I use, I really use this to pay for my grading fees where I send off cards to get graded is pretty much what I predominantly do, so. I'll sell $200 a month on average. Oh, nice. And then I'll use that and I'll pay for the cards that I want to get graded into my PC or the really good cards that I that I want to grade before I sell. How did it like it start out with uh, with Billy Pops? How do you get the connection with he, uh, uh, yeah, I've been following him since he opened up the shop. Um, we saw that he had uh, Percy Harvin coming in for a signing day. Oh. We came in here. We, we collected, I collected football cards with my brother. I don't even know how long. Uh, we kind of got out of the hobby as we got into college, went to grad school, um, came back, had discretionary income, he opened up a shop and, you know, we like to collect certain things. We like Jaguars. I, I PC uh, Justin Tucker, the kicker, uh, mm -hmm. which works out well because everybody in the shop knows mm -hmm. that I'm the only one who collects a kicker. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just do it. We buy cards and um, it, it works out very well for us and, you know, make a lot of friends in the life of the card shop and you get to heckle people and... Uh, Best way, trash talk. Yes, That's trash it. talk. That's yes. it. Trash talk, everybody. That guy over there is a is a uh, is a Broncos fan, and they're about the worst team in the league. So, um, uh, but yeah, that's that, that's what we do. I come in here every couple weeks and sell it. Nice. I always ask this question: greatest find you ever had? Greatest rares, pull, the rare, rarest or like your most precious or your most memorable. My most memorable. It's actually um, it's a great story. I came in. I bought a back of uh, Panini uh, Mosaic No Huddle. Uh, Jamil's wife got me the pack, and she got me a Patrick Mahomes one out of ten No Huddle MVP. Wow. Uh, yeah. So it was probably a thousand dollar card. Yeah. Wow, that, she picked out for me, so I'm forever indebted to her because <laughs> I, I love her for it. Thanks, so Meredith. <laughs> yes, Meredith. Yes. All right. <laughs> awesome. All right, thank you, Mr. Okay. Nice guy. What do we got right here? All right, we got some Topps Chrome Sapphire. This is an online exclusive 2020 update, so it should have an auto. All right. Let's find out. What are you looking for? What are you hoping for? Robert, mm. any of the big names, you know? All right, so eight, looks like eight packs. Mm -hmm. right. How many cards per pack? Four, so it'd be 32. So there's a Jordan Alvarez right off the top. Rookie, that's a nice card. Jake Fraley, rookie autographs. So that's not too bad, a little rookie, rookie auto. Pete Alonzo, there we go, all-star game. Billy Hamilton and Nolan Arenado, all-star game. 
Oh, yeah, probably something there. As a Mets fan, that one doesn't make me happy. Nick Solak, there's a rookie. Richie Martin, former Florida Gator. And Matt Davidson. Randy Rosarina, there we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, Is that the base? That's just the base, yeah. We got a Jordan, too. A little Jordan rookie. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope that that's the Angels yeah. player that we're thinking it could be. Let's see. Oh, oh man, it's the green too out of 45. Oh, we were hoping that was trout. That's, Come still, on. A cool, cool. that's still a cool card there. Yeah. Happy, sad? No, that's a good box. Yeah, good box. That's a good box. Good yeah, no, I'm happy about that. Nice, cool. That's good. Good stuff. Good luck. Good luck, JTUSA. Oh, Christian Pulisic. Purple. Goose magic. 22 of 99. Ooh, it's magic, baby. <laughs> it's Jamili magic. Let's go. So we're doing something called Pack Wars. You guys ever done Pack Wars? No, I don't even yeah, know. What it is. You don't know what it is? You know what it is? Everyone pick a pack. Um, Let's get Dad in this too. Let PG play as well. I want to see PG. Sweet. Everyone pick a pack. I don't know. That's how it works. So on the back of baseball cards, there's tons of stats, right? Yeah. Card numbers, all sorts of stuff. So I'm gonna tell you guys a category and whoever has that category, so let's say the most home runs in a year or highest batting average or whatever, wins everybody's pack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now that what, the, what the, the pack war rule will be, okay? okay? So we're gonna do something easy. We're gonna do lowest base card number. All right, so that means a card number on the back, like one through 50 or 100 or whatever. So the lowest base card number, whoever has that wins. All right, go ahead. Let's see. So obviously if you get one, you win. It's gotta be base card though. Not an insert. Oh, okay. Well, 240 is not cutting it, Brian. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna go look. <laughs> uh, 23. 14. 14. I had an 18. 30. Oh, 30. You got a 30. You got 14. Uh, 10. Oh, that's an insert. That's an insert. Oh, oh 10. Got 10. Oh, we got a 10. 10 is our show. Yeah. You got, you got anything low? Uh, <laughs> no, mine are on the 200. <laughs> yeah, my lowest is, my lowest is an 89. 89? 10? I had an 18. Oh, yeah, winner is Brian. Champ with the hat like Griffey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cough it up, Halen. Cough it up. He got some. He got him. So that's backwards. That's how you do it. Like Dude, shout out to Panini. I don't know if you know about this, but player of the day, they only do it for shops. So you go into a shop, you open a pack, and you get any of the players that are like marked for the day, you win free packs. And it's been such a cool thing. We see kids that come in here uh, that open up packs trying to get a player of the day pack. So shout out to Panini for this, because I, I, I love it. I, they do it for football as well. They send us a mat. And here's the other cool thing. Every week, if you hit a player, you get entered into a drawing for more. And then if you win that drawing, you enter into a monthly drawing and they do all these prizes. So uh, we actually had a player of the day. We got second in the nation with a shout out to Richie. He got it for football. So cool little program that Penny does, player of the day. All right, what we got? All right, what are we opening up, Ben? Prism Shallows. Ooh. B basketball or football? Football. Football. So who are you hoping to pull? Herbert, of course. Herbert, of course, he says. Let's see. Even point, yeah, even better. There you go. Kill Harry. Ooh, JJ, where's JJ. he going to get traded to, you think? Uh, probably the, I don't know, Jags. Maybe. Jags? It's Falcons, that your boy. Uh-oh. Ooh, Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay, green, prism. And Rookie. DeAndre Swift. Not I bad. Like and, and kid card. Kid card. <laughs> <laughs> so in these packs, you get a, a pack of, what are they called? Uh, red, white, and blue packs. Red, white, and blues, right? So yeah. these could, you get three cards, and they could be big. So let's see what you get. So prism is getting crazy. It's pretty expensive. These are uh, like $44 a pack. So for kids, it's tough. You know, Ben's awesome because he buys and trades. He's very savvy. But for young kids, it's a big issue we have trying to get packs that kids can afford. All right, let's see what we got. Miles Boykin. Miles Boykin. See you guys. See you, man. Uh-oh. You know who's that? Joe. I can't read I that. know. Joe Theismann. <laughs> and Ooh, Ooh, Gabe Davis. Gabe, Gabe Davis. He's there we not go. bad. Let's, see, let's get teach the people at home how to sleeve a card. Oh, yeah. This is how you sleeve a card. <laughs> Awesome. All the kids out there need to learn from another kid. There you go, get it in, and there you go, yeah. and you get the hard case. Now why is it important to put in a sleeve in a hard case then? So like if you carry it anywhere maybe. Yeah, because it could fall out. Yeah, it could fall out. Yeah, and that kind of keeps it in the hard case. And now show them, show them the final product. Voila. Sure Look at that. <laughs> well, so so we are sleeving rookies, right? Yeah. So tell, why do you sleeve rookie cards and not the other ones? Because the other ones, it's not like their first year. Yeah. It's the first year they're playing. So right. It's like the it's like a first edition kind of. And when people collect and when you buy and trade cards, are you are you going for rookie cards mainly? Yeah, most likely. And, and can you tell us how well you have you made some money on rookie cards? Definitely. Yeah. And then who are some cards that you like to maybe flip, like buy? Flip. Uh, maybe 
like uh, Michael Thomas, maybe. Yeah, he's a good one. Michael Thomas, and can't think of any really. Well, I, you've got me on a couple good ones, right? Yeah. We've got cards in here where you bought. I think you bought. I think you bought from Mike that one time a green McCaffrey. Yeah, the green McCaffrey. A prism green for how much? I bought it for like five. And then you sold for how much? Like forty or thirty. Five. Hey, that's a money making right there. Well, you had a consignment case in the shop. Yeah. Remember that? Tell me about that. Well, the consignment case like helps a lot. Yeah. If you're like a kid, it helps with your math. It helps with your math. Because like when you're like 20% off, you, f you have to figure out like what it is. Because if you bought a car for 10 bucks, right? Yeah. And then you want to sell it for 15, but you had 20% off, you, you got to figure that percentage out, right? Yeah. So you're making, you know, t you know, 250 or so, but you want want to be smart not to lose money. Yeah. What about, did you make uh, spreadsheets? Yeah. Yeah. They were like prices and how good the players were. Yeah. Because like you don't know if they're going to go up. So we might do like Com C. We usually... Well, tell them what Com C is. Com C is like a website you could search up cards, like basically any cards. And you can send cards to them to sell? Yeah. Right? That's what I do. Yeah. So you make money even on that? Yeah. How old are you again? Uh, 11. 11 year old card mogul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Talk these, about these These two. are some cards I pulled out of... When Prism was like cheap, a, like 2018 like, yeah, Prism, like, like there was like packs for five dollars. I bought a bunch of those. I pulled a Luca red, white, and blue, but I traded for this. Oh, you think Luca Don tricks of the future? Not really, but I think he's gonna be really good. Mm. He's not in the future. But, yeah. Ben, how long have you been doing this stuff? Three, for about three years. So you're you're eight years old. Wow. I was seven. <laughs> I was seven. Wow. Why do you like doing this stuff? That's a good question, well, especially I at your like, age. I like collecting. Right. I like collecting and saving up for something new. Yeah. You wanna you wanna something that I think is cool to talk about is car kids who collect cards, right? Yeah. So what would you tell other kids who are just learning about cards? Mm. Like if a kid's trying to like a friend or something at school or you're watching other kids get, getting into it, what do you think? you would share with advice because you've done this now for like three years two years Use your mom's money <laughs> <laughs> what other advice so that's got number one save up save save and then go for the big players okay so go for the big players in packs or singles both both okay so there's a little fun with ripping right we like mm -hmm. to call it ripping and there's also fun with getting a good card and a deal right yeah and i know you've done a lot of hunting and searching you probably brought from mr mr travis's or randy's uh case yeah. before right and you get deals and then you can flip them yeah, we're trying to do some trades like with these cards over here. Mainly hey not guys. these. What's up? We're well, trying to trade those in today, and what will you do with the trade in credit you get? Buy more packs and cards. <laughs> all right, so maybe we should do some 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 trade and some dealing on this stuff. Yeah. All right, so what do you want to you want to trade all this? Yeah. All right, so I'll talk. Let me let me reason through what I go through, right? So I think about what cards would I like to maybe resell and shop. So football, I'm not buying a lot of right now because it's off season. Yeah. But Nick Chubb's not a bad card. Kobe White's not a bad card for trading for basketball. And Burrow's not a bad card because everybody always asks for Burrow. I have a lot of Tua. And basketball, Alonzo's kind of on a downtrend. Right? Kobe White, that's a cool card, but it's the tribute, right? So I don't really need it. And the Porter's not a, not a bad card. Now Select, this is a good card. Where'd you get this one from? I bought it for like 20 when he was like, when he was like a rookie. Yeah, so this is a cool card. So this is out of Select, which is a hobby only. But did you guys know? I don't know if you know this. I don't know if even dad knows this. Select is coming out for football retail this year. But I think those four, maybe I'll come up with the price for trading and we'll go from there. So this last card, I'm gonna give back to Benjamin because it's only last sale on this was 750 on this card. And so for me, it's like, I'd rather Benjamin have this card to keep in the off season. So these are trending, this sells for about 11. I think they're like 15 to 18 and then 10 for this. My offer to you is, I'll give you 25 credit in the store if you want. It gives me for all of them? For the three of them. Wait, how much? You so said 25 eight? for the three. 25, so. Oh. You can negotiate if you want. Can we go eight on the truck? I probably don't. That's the one I probably don't want. These two are easier to sell. I'll say 25 on these two. 25 in the pair. So this one's 18. This is about 10, so it's 28. How about $22 credit? 24. Mm. 23. I mean, you came down pretty quick. 22.50. 2250. That's a deal. Right. <laughs> 2250. Deal. Done. Done. Yeah. Thank you for helping me, Joey, Alex, Mer Alex. Meredith, and Jamil. All right, Meredith, Jamil, Nate. Nate. Oh, yeah, yeah, Nate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pokemon, right? Oh, Brian. Brian. Yeah, so the staff helping you out. Yeah. All right, cool. So you got 22.50 to spend in store, so have fun. <laughs> oh! PQ. Dang, it's your own PK! Black Auto. Wow, PK! Spain!
He's married to Shakira. Well, we're gonna talk about some mantles. So, Joe, you you do like the Yankees? I mean, I don't know. Are you sure? I don't know if you like the Yankees or, or what. <laughs> Not only. And then we have a Mets fan over here. We got Paul, PG, and his son over here. He's hiding. He's hiding. It's okay. So we're looking at mantle stuff. And what were we just talking about with these? That I so think we're looking at some uh, some very old New York Yankees cars from the 1950s. Of course, being a Yankee collector, mm -hmm. it's all about Mr. Mantle. He's, yep. he's the big dog in our hobby. But there's other Hall of Famers. I'm talking about Yogi Berra, Whitey Ford, Bill Rizzuto, Casey Stengel, stars like Elston Howard, Roger Maris. They all go for a good bit of money. Unfortunately, what we're looking at here, we've got some 52 and 51 Bowmans. If you're a Yankee fan, you know about 51 Bowman. This is the rookie set for Mickey Mantle and Whitey Ford. Well, look at this. 52 tops, <laughs> 52 tops, and somebody decided to bust out the scissors. I think what they did with this, Joe, is the collector who had them wanted to match the other ones, the 52, so they literally cut them up to match them. And we have Eddie Matthews, there's Billy Martin right there from 52, right? Yeah, 52, and, 52. And when I was going through this collection, I was thinking in my mind, Yogi. Like, if I see a Mickey Mantle that's cut up like this, I'm gonna die because the 52 top Mantle is such a rare card. Th that's the most expensive card <laughs> in the hobby. They had a PSA <laughs> 9 sell for $5.2 million. Yep. But it didn't look like a nine. That. <laughs> a nine. There's three tens graded. They would each break ten million easy. I think what's cool about mano collectors is you're trying to get a nice copy of every year, right? Correct. Like you, and that's what a lot of things is. Everyone says, "I have the '61. I'm missing a '60. Or I have a '53. I'm missing a '52." That's the cool thing I love about manos is that everybody can get like one of their own of every year. And the nice thing is, once you get a five, you see a six, you can upgrade, you know, and sell the five. And Mantle is, I think, quintessential for every baseball collector. And this is a really special card here. I have this card in a PSA 6. Tell them about that one. But mine is a, uh, with the last name in it, yellow letters. This one, as you can see, the last name is in white letters. This is far more rare, mm -hmm. far more valuable. This card in particular is popular with Mantle collectors because of this. Yeah, yeah. You're looking at the back. In pre-internet days, it was mm -hmm. hard to find player stats. Mantle retired in spring training of 1969, meaning Topps had already printed this card. So you're looking at his complete career stats. So for years, yeah. this card was a little more valuable than it otherwise would be because of that. And you add in the, the print uh, variation with the last name, a really uh, pretty card right there. So to find it in white letters. Yeah, I, I had to get that when I started the show. Yeah. That's a cool thing too about you know intricacies in cards that people miss, like and when you say that, like you, you think about the spring training, people don't even know that like today, you know what I mean? And when you go back and look at that stuff, it's monumental to, I think, not only just cards, because cards now are so different, they don't have stats, it wasn't the Americana element where everybody's had these and trade them as a kid. So that was how they got the information, and I think it's really cool. I'll show you something interesting. So this is a Mantle card uh, from 1952, uh, is 52 Bowman. If you look at his autograph there, he actually changed the way his autograph looks. And I'm looking at some of the other cards here, and we don't see any yeah. with the printed autographs, but to find a 52 Mantle uh, Bowman is nice. Of course, the 52 tops is the big dog. That's that's the one you want. In terms of value, check these two. This is 53 tops. We've got two of them here, a PSA 1 and a PSA 5.5. They're both beautiful cards. The value between the two, Jamil would know more than I, but maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred to fifteen grand. So if you go higher, there's a PSA 10 53 mantle that is listed for 2.5 million that they're selling fractional shares of. That's a new trend in the hobby where uh, investors can own a piece of a card and then when that card is sold, uh, they get a return on it, much like you would invest in stocks. You can actually do the same thing uh, with fractional ownership. So the, the theory behind it is it makes cards like this available to people who would not have the uh, the funds to otherwise acquire them. Of course, you don't get to actually hold it or take it home with you. Um, but yeah, Mickey Mantle, man. This is uh, for, for vintage. This is the number one name in the hobby. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh,